Hello, I'm Johnny Hunt and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a workshop that I presented at the WASUP Ukulele Festival in Midland, Michigan in March of 2015. And so I wanted to make this video for uh, especially those that were able to attend because I'm going to cover a lot of material here and it's hard to absorb everything in one sitting. So uh, I'll just make this video as a reference. Um, just go back over some of the things that we uh, talked about at the workshop at the festival and give you a chance to see it as many times as you need to. And just, uh, I'm going to cover all sort of different ways to improve your playing. Uh, the, the name of the workshop is 5 and 19. And you're probably scratching your head wondering what that's about. But uh, if you look at your left hand, you will count one, two, three, four, five fingers. And I think uh, when we're starting out, it's easy to, you know, we all like the C chord because there's one finger or F is two. But uh, when you play the uke, you have an advantage in that you have more fingers than you have strings. So you, your fingers outnumber the strings five to four. And, uh, you know, that includes your thumb, although I don't use the thumb too much for playing the uke, but like uh, for guitar open tunings, it's uh, useful. And also, a tough chord to make on a uke is an E chord. And you can wrap your finger, your thumb around the, the top three frets and then, you know, catch your other note here with your index finger. So that's one way you would use your thumb. So that's where the five comes from. And I also think that when we're starting out, it's easy to neglect the fact that we have all these nice frets all the way from the, the nut down to the sound hole. And, uh, you know, unless you have a, a beginner's uke, you probably have 19 frets. Here's 12, 14, 15, 17, 19. And, uh, you know, notice my uke has a cutaway, and that's because uh, at times I use some of these frets that are up the neck. So the idea is not to get locked into, hey, I know six first position chords, and uh, that's all I really need. Although I will say, in the last few years, I've come to realize that that's okay. Because there are people that just want to be able to play a few chords and sing songs. And uh, in fact, I have a friend, uh, some of you from Folk Music Society of Midland may know Ray. We'll just call him Ray. But uh, he probably knows six chords, but he's a total master of what he does. Uh, he's got the cowboy hat, shirt, the boots. Uh, he does Western songs. He knows them down pat. He's been doing them for many years. And he's so good, I could sit and listen to him for hours. Uh, so it's okay to be Ray. But uh, if you're looking to expand, you know, that, that's what I found. You, you never stop learning. There's just... Uh, there's no end in sight for the things you can learn on the uke. And if you're a curious person, uh, you'll, you'll find, at least I found, that you, you kind of go along and you learn something and it clicks. And maybe, you, maybe you've looked at it before, but it just never quite set. So, you know, you're, you're playing it is sort of leveled out and then somebody shows you something or you see something online or, or read a book or I don't know. But something, something will click in your mind and you get that much better and you go along. It's kind of a stair-step thing as far as improving. So hopefully, you know, if you find one nugget in this whole class, something that you can incorporate into where you're at, because we're all at different levels, uh, I think it'll be worthwhile. So that's why I said I'm going to cover a lot of different things here. Throw away the ones you're not ready for or don't care about or just, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. But uh, find something that uh, you know you can use to uh, augment and improve your skills. So, so the first thing I want to do is just start with the chords that we already know. Okay, so when we're uh, when we're just raw, we're, we learn our our basic chords. So I'm going to just go through some of those chords and uh, show you some alternate ways to make those. All right, and uh, again, keep in mind that. Uh, once you learn some of the, the positions that those chords or those shapes at least I should say are, are good up the neck like here's just for an example here's the G chord that you know and if you move it up five frets it's a C and a D
So that's some of the, some of the things I'm going to be showing you, but we'll try to go through the chords uh, more systematically and uh, just give you some basic options and you pick and choose the ones you like. Uh, I have to say too that all learning, there's two parts to learning. There's the seeing and understanding and then there's the muscle memory. Like, uh, you know, I do a, what we call a peanut class uh, once a month. It's uh, people every age need ukulele training. And I show the people three chords, like I start from ground zero, like they've never played before. And you know, so, you know, in an hour we can learn three chords. But I can show them the chords, but it takes time, and this is the other second part, is it to, to develop the muscle memory and the coordination to be able to change chords in time. And that there's no substitute for. You just have to do it enough times to train your brain, your cerebellum, your fine motor skills, your motor cortex, to, uh, to make the chord changes in time so you can keep up. And then you'll find you know, the next step beyond learning the chords, changing the chords, and when you get that on autopilot, then you can think about the words if you're singing a song. And uh, you know, there's there's different layers of music as you uh, improve and increase your skills. And something something has to be on autopilot because you can really only focus on one thing. So if you're just remembering the chords, that's fine. That's the first step. And then, like I said, this the second is changing the chords. And the third is just doing it naturally so you don't even think about it and you can learn your words. And if you're really uh, interested in becoming a, a performer, uh, the next step is to know the words and to be able to interact with your audience because that, that's really, in my estimation, what separates the, the amateurs from the real pros is the real pros are entertainers. You know, it's not that you're taking, taking the singing and the, the recording and playing the ute or whatever instrument for granted, but you've got that so ingrained that you can focus on connecting with the, the people that you're performing for. So that's, a, that's another story for another day. Let's, let's talk about some of these chords. So here's our C chord, 0003. And you can also make it this way. And here's where the theory comes in, is understanding why you do what you do. Because uh, first, we, we have to learn certain things by rote, which is what the chord shapes are. But then if we understand what we're looking for and what we're trying to do, that helps it to make sense. And when it makes sense and you understand the theory and the why, that helps you apply what you've learned to other chords or other situations or other songs. And you'll find that it's worth, I found that it's worth the effort to take the time to learn some music theory. You know, is it boring? Sometimes it is. But uh, I find it fascinating to, to know the relationships between the strings and the notes and the scales and just how it all ties together. And the, the same thing goes there. It, it just builds on itself. And something will click and make sense. And then you think, oh, OK, so the light goes on and uh, you, you understand why. So, you know, if we, if we name our strings, here's G, C, E, A. And if we're making a, our normal C chord, G, C, E, C again. So if we go E, F, F sharp, G, G, C, G, C. Which is what the rockers call a power chord. Because there's no E in it anymore. It's just Gs and Cs. C's is the, is the root, the first degree of the, the chord, and G is the do, re, mi, fa, so, fifth, because uh, you know, a major chord is a first, a third, and a fifth. And so here, here's another way. And I'm just kind of rolling back and forth and picking it up and letting it go. And you'll find that when your chords are moving, instead of just strumma, 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 you know, three or four measures of that, at some point we'll wear thin and you'll want to do something to spice it up and change it up. And that's where strum patterns and right hand things come in. But also, right now we're going to focus on some of the left hand things. Like I said, we're going to show you some different ways to make these chords. So there's a good one for a C.
Here's another one. This is called a shuffle. What a shuffle is, is taking the fifth degree of the chord, which in, in the case of a C is a G note. You know, here's our G string open. And moving it up to the sixth. So it'd be one, three, and six instead of one, three, and five. How do you do it? It's easy. You know, you got your your third finger, one, two, three, ring finger on the one, two, three, third fret. And you take your uh, pointer, your uh, index finger, and just on and off from the, the second fret of the top string. And that's called a shuffle. You can still do it here. If we move it up one more fret to where we are at three, zero, zero, three, you might recognize that chord, or at least the sound. That's a C seventh chord. It's G A B flat. And you hear a seventh chord a lot in blues, okay? Or um, and a seventh chord is a chord that has tension. That's really what chord changes and even the melody does is creates musical tension and then resolves it. So here's another C7. You know, here's the one you probably already know. Uh, open, open, open first string. And it sounds a little different because you have because you have a note above. So you got a G and a B flat here and a C and an E. Because a seventh chord has four notes in it. It's got the, the root, it's got the root, the third, the fifth, like a major chord, and I'm taking one of the fifths and turning it into a flat seven, which is, uh, that's what makes it a seventh chord. And you see that uh, every seventh chord pulls you back to another chord, and in the case of a C seventh, it's pulling you back to an F chord. Can you hear that? So, you know, that that's just some variations of things you can do with a C chord, zero, zero, three, three, or shuffle. get into up the next stuff later. I'm just going to show you some first position or mostly first position things here for some of the, the common chords that we use. Uh, D chord 2220 and what what does that mean? Second fret, second fret, second fret, open. All right. And there's different ways to make it. I have big fingers. I like to make it like this. Okay, I have my uh, middle finger on the top string my index finger on the next string and my ring finger on the third string down and the fourth string open so two 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 zero and that's the shuffle is to just end up doing a bar which would be a D sixth because this is a fifth so in the our notes in a D chord are D F sharp and A so here's our open A and we're just turning it into a D. You can make your uh, D chord this way, that's fine. It's just whatever works for you. And I talked about thumb, you could even make it with your thumb. Oh, I, probably, I, I don't really use that, I don't recommend it, but it's a possibility, all right? And you make your shuffle by just kind of dropping everything where you're using the pad of your ring finger rather than the tip. And that's something I always teach the beginners is you want to use the tips of your fingers to do the, the fretting. The reason being if you use the pad you tend to get thuddy notes behind it. But if you're coming in as much as you can perpendicular to the fretboard you're going to get a cleaner chord especially when you have multiple fingers involved. So all I'm doing is kind of bringing down my uh, the pad of my ring finger to create a F sharp. Not an F sharp, I'm sorry, a B. And then 
then I change it to a bar chord, and then I, that makes my what? D seventh, right? There's another way you can make your, your D chord, although it's a little bit more advanced because it involves using the, the pad of your index finger and still leaving the E string open. I'm sorry, G, C, E, A. I still think in terms of guitar, even, you know, I've been playing guitar for 40 some years and uke for five. So, uh, I, you know, guitar is my first language, so you'll just have to forgive me when I translate to uke. So you, here's an open A. Again, it's just, you know, you can tell my chords are a little muddy there, and I don't really use that shape too much. I'm more inclined to go this way. But, you know, it's useful, and try it, and there'll probably be, at some point, uh, instances where you want to use that. So, again, just because you know one way to make a chord, I th this is the whole mindset I'm trying to lead you away from, is toward the idea of there are multiple ways to make each chord. And that's again, what adds color and interest to your playing. And here's the seven. All right, so that's D. Another thing you can do with a D chord is bring your pinky down here to the fifth fret. This is what I would call a long D. Two, 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 five, second, 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 fifth fret. That puts a D on the top, because if we if we walk up our scale here, A, B, C sharp, D. And all this is, if you think about it, it's a, a C chord jacked up two frets. Because here's a C chord, although we don't always make it with our pinky. Because here's the nut. You can think of your the nut being a zero fret. Okay. So here's a C. D flat, D, two, 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 five. And when you're making bar chords, which we're going to talk about later, of course you're using your finger flat, and you just have to find that right spot where all the strings ring out nice and clearly. Okay, so there's some ideas for uh, your D chord. Uh, e chord we don't use too much. How about an F? Two open one open two zero one zero. You can see my fingers on my left hand are coming down this way, not this way. Sometimes you have to throw. Think about at least throwing your elbow out, or you know getting your hand out front so you're not. Because when we're learning, we tend to look down, which makes it really hard to get where we're coming in perpendicular to the fretboard. But uh, you know when when you're able to just look down enough to see without having the, the angle there, you'll find it a lot easier to do. All right. So here's our F chord. Here's the shuffle. Add the sixth, turn the fifth degree into the sixth. So in our C string, we go from C to D. Here's the seventh. F7, right? Six, seven, six. You probably notice this F6 looks a lot like another chord that you already know, which is two, two, one, open, and that's a D minor, okay? So here's some more music theory. Every major chord has what's called a relative minor, which uh, is just basically a minorized version of that major chord that in many cases is interchangeable, okay? And there's a formula, there's a chart called the circle of fifths, and it's got all the major chords, and then on the next circle in it's got all the minor chords that correspond. So, and that, that relative minor chord that I'm talking about, which in the case of F is D minor, is always the sixth note in that scale. So in the F scale, F, G, A, B flat, C, D. So D minor is the relative minor for F, because it's the sixth note in the F scale. So that's all we're doing is turning this C into a D. And the seventh is a E flat. So 
that's the one thing you can do with an F chord. Another thing you can do is bring your pinky down here on the third fret of the bottom string. Which is a C chord, right? It's, and it's always nice, just in a general sense, this applies to a lot of different things, is to find an anchor when you're changing chords. An anchor is a finger that is common to both chords. And what I have found is that when you have an anchor, your other fingers have a tendency to just fall into place because uh, there's some sort of positional sense in your brain as to where your fingers are, especially after you've changed the chords and uh, you learn that without even thinking, you know, this goes here and that goes there. It just happens. When you have, same thing with, uh, like if you're doing finger picking, you see my uke here is all worn out, and it's even recessed. And that's because when I finger pick, I, I've got my, my fourth finger, my ring finger, is anchored there, so I don't have to look at where my right hand is. It's just a positional sense, okay? So uh, same thing goes with trying to find ways to anchor chords. from F to G seventh, what's your anchor? Well, it's this uh, where, you're, where you got your, your uh, index finger. So try to, you know, if it's feasible in chord changes, think of where your anchor is and so you can, you can learn that as you play. It doesn't always happen in every key, but uh, you know, it's just a nice way to make the chord changing. Uh, more smooth. So again, here's our F chord, 2010-2013. All right, so there's some things you can do with an F chord. Um, G chord, 0-2-0-2-3-2, second fret, third fret, second fret, what I call an inverted triangle. All right. Okay, we talked about 5 and 19, so I want you to look at this uh, left hand of yours and get to know your buddy here. It's called your pinky. And you will find, if uh, at least I found in my experience, once you get comfortable with using your pinky, it just opens up all sorts of possibilities that you never knew existed. And you just have to, you know, I think the problem is we get to where we, we, we know a, we know our six chords and that's enough to get us by and say, well, you know, why should I, why should I learn to do this when I already know this? And the answer is because it's fun to learn, it's fun to conquer new things, uh, to, um, to grow. That creates a lot of satisfaction if you're like me. And again, it adds spice and interest to what you're doing both for you and for anybody that might want to listen. So, there's a G chord, 0232, there's 0235, just dropping your pinky down. And uh, okay, here's another kind of an aside, but this is, I play a tenor uke because I have big hands, and I get kind of cramped up on a soprano, although, you know, I do have one and I can play it. But uh, if you have smaller hands, when you're doing these chords with a stretch in them, you might be better with a smaller uke, okay? Just kind of makes sense. So do, you know, try different sizes and see what makes you happy. Now here's another way to do it. Now I'm changing a little bit, but here's my anchor. So I have to refinger to do it this way. And what I'm doing is taking my middle finger and moving it from the bottom string to the third string down. Then when I throw my pinky in, it's a little, it's a little easier until you get used to making that stretch. So here, and then if you do this, this is zero, two, three, five. With your ring finger, you can come all the way across to the fourth fret. Okay, possibilities. And you'll find when you're using four finger chords, when we talk about bar chords, 
because this is so, sort of a bar chord. But you'll find that once you get this shape down, you can use it anywhere. Okay, so that's the beauty of what we call closed chords, where you're fretting each string. And you can do the chop thing too. Or the, you know, the Z chord, as they say. kind of a percussive rhythm thing which is done by you're just muting all the strings so when you're learning you don't you're trying to get away from the thuddy muted chords and you know for a variety you can relearn some of those chords all right the, the z chord as it's called so uh, those are things you can do with your g chord here's the shuffle again Need the fourth fret with your pinky on the second string down. There's the dominant seventh. So fifth, sixth, flat seven. There's a G seventh. Here's the G seventh that you probably already know, maybe. Which is here's the triangle, which is G. Here's the inverted triangle, which is G7th. So there's some things you can do with a D chord. And not a D chord, G chord. And then uh, A, 2100. Here's the shuffle. Two one two zero. Seventh, second fret, third fret with the pinky. Any time, as a general rule, you can move your fingers without having to move your hand. It's going to be easier to do. All right, just. Same thing as the anchor technique or the anchor theory I was talking about earlier. If you leave your hand in the same spot, you don't have to think about, well, how far down do I have to go and I have to look, and then that's where my focus is, is, you know, where's my left hand on the fingerboard? And then the strum is autopilot, and the words, unless you know the song, get uh, garbled up at times, possibly. All right. So. your shuffle in seventh for an A chord. And that's uh, that's be an add nine, okay? Because it's G C E A. So there's a root on the top of our A chord. But here's an A here, so you kind of have the same note twice on the top and bottom strings. I should, I'll go back and cover some of these. This is a suspended fourth chord. So I'm just turning uh, 2100 into 2200. Turns the third degree, which is this G sharp, into an A. You can do that with a lot of chords, like the, the D chord we were just doing. So it's two 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 and then two two three, and you can even come off with your ring finger, two two open. So those are suspended chords. It's a suspended second and a suspended fourth. It's called sus chords. You see, like D sus. That's what they're talking about. Okay. With a C chord. F chord. Uh, here on the first.
first string, 201, 301, 001. All right, so sus chords are good just for a variety too. So uh, that's some of the things you can do with the major chords. How about minor chords? Um, we'll just go through a few of them here. An A, A minor. Two zero zero zero. Do the secret agent man thing. So we're just on the third string, adding the first fret of the third string down in the second fret. So just another rule uh, might you might find helpful is if you ever have taken classical guitar lessons uh, the basic one basic concept is to assign each finger to a fret so instead of making your A minor with your index finger since it's you're noting at the second fret uh, try making it with your middle finger which frees up because you can't you can't really go behind you know this way once you commit this finger everything else has got to be down beneath Okay, down the, down the fingerboard for higher notes. But if, if you're using the middle finger, like I suggested, you can do things with your index finger behind here at the first fret, which is exactly what we're doing. And here's the other way, 2003. Another uh, little tidbit of knowledge you might find useful. There's so many different chord names, and you know some of them are weird, wacky jazz chords like um, E E flat minor flat seven or something like that. That you know, then, and you've never seen them before, and they've got some convoluted shape. You can get by the only after the the, the main letter chord, like a, a D chord. The only thing that really has to matter is whether it's a minor or not. So if you see that small M there, you have to respect that. You can't play a D major. You have to play the D minor. Okay, and if it's D minor 6th or 7th or something, you can still get by with just playing D minor. Same thing for major chords, like a, a C6 or a C7 or a C9. If you just play a C chord, you're still okay. Although, you know, depending on where you are in your progress, it, that's what makes your playing more colorful, all right, is learning some of those extraneous chords that you don't have to know to have fun and play and say, be like Ray. You can still get by with your, you know, your half a dozen chords and your, your basic songs. But uh, don't get bogged down. That's that's the reason I say it. Don't get uh, frustrated because there's all these wacky chords you've never seen before and you don't know how to make them. And the whole song's like that, so I'm just going to turn the page. Uh, you can still play the song just by playing majors and minors, even sevenths. You know, you can still play the major chord and, and get away with it and, and be okay. So, uh, where was I? Okay, A minor. <laughs> That's all I'm doing there is I know I know what key I'm in and I know my scales. That's that's another thing uh, I would cover it maybe another lesson is being able to play the scales in whatever key you're in and knowing what notes are in and which ones aren't so you're not hitting clunkers that you don't really want. But uh, you know we'll talk about that another time. So let's look at some other chords. How about D minor? Minor two two one open. Okay, I'm just pulling off here, so it's two two zero zero. Pinky at the third of the third string down two two three zero. And just 
you say throw them in one different note. Some of them work, some of them don't. You just have to find the ones that are doable. Uh, I guess what I would recommend is just the 2-2-2-2-2-0-0-2-2-3-0, which is uh, suspended minors. So that's D minor. Uh, G minor, open two, three, one, zero, two, three, one. So we have our uh, middle finger on the second string down, ring finger on the third string down, and uh, index finger on the high string. There. So what am I doing? I'm pulling off my ring finger, zero, two, three, zero, and I'm adding my pinky, zero, two, three, three. talk about bar chords next but uh, this is essentially a bar chord for a D minor all right so we'll get into that too but uh, it's just because I'm, I'm playing with three strings and I've got one open here so I can just refinger it make it a closed chord so there's some things you can do with G minor uh, what else have we got uh, we've got A minor D minor G minor B minor is essentially A minor, up two frets. And you do the same things. So it's four, well, we're not at bar chords yet, so we won't get into that too much uh, yet. Uh, other minors, I can't really think of any ones we use all that much that aren't first position. So let's talk about seventh chords. Again, C seventh. Zero one. Let's just play in the scale. So here's your option zero zero three one. I'm adding two on the second fret of the second string down, so zero two zero one. Seventh suspended thing again. So it's open two one two, open two one three, open two one open. Uh, D seventh, A seventh. Is A seven? No, it is not A seventh. It is D seventh. Two zero two zero. Or the bar form. This is an easy bar form. It's a good place to start when you're learning your bar chords. Uh, two 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 three. But C seventh moved up two because here's C seventh, right? D flat seventh, D seventh. Two 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 three, two zero two zero. Two zero two three. Same note an octave apart. That's the uh, flat seven in there. So yeah, C note. And uh, everybody's favorite seventh chord. Uh, all right, A seventh. Doing the shuffle. So it's zero one zero 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 one two zero zero one three zero. So there are some first position things that you can do with the chords. And I don't think I got past the fifth fret. And what's the name? What did I entitle the the workshop? Five and how many? Nineteen. So. That gets us into the concept of bar chords. So it's uh, it's not chords you play at the bar, B-A-R, it's B-A-R-R-E. 
a French word, no doubt. And bar chords, I guess the best uh, philosophy or way I can get you to think uh, to make your bar chords, because you are going to learn to make them, is to make the chords you already know without your index finger. All right, because this is going to be your bar finger. All right. So let's just take some of the chords we know, like, uh, okay, like I mentioned before, here's a C chord. Don't make it with your bar chord because it's at the third fret, right? One, two, three. So make it with your ring finger. And when you want to make a bar, probably use your pinky, you know, especially, you know, in the familiar positions down at the bottom of the neck. It's more of a stretch going one, uh, one, 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 four with your ring finger than it is with your pinky. This is much more relaxed. And that's important. You want your hand to be relaxed. You don't want it to be all dense. No, that's not the idea. It's, it's everything is nice and easy and smooth. So here's your bar form. For I would call this off of a C shape. So it's one, 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 four. So as far as which finger, all four notes with uh with the again the flat of the the pad of your index finger. And that's the that's the way to start learning bar chords. Is just do all open chords. These are all sixth chords. So you know, if you strum open, that's a C6 chord. So here's D flat 6, D6. So just go up and down the neck, making your sixth chords. The uh, goal being to have none of those. It's just finding the exact right way, you know, how far up or down your finger is, how much roll there is, how much pressure. That covers the three dimensions, right? So, where does your finger go to get all four notes ringing? And then once you get the four clear notes, it's just a matter of doing whatever you need to do to make the chord with the, the rest of, you know, your, your remaining three fingers. That That's the, the underlying principle behind all the bar chords that you'll be learning here. So, there's the C-shaped bar chord. Uh, I'm going to do all these with a bar in the first position. So if we made an F chord, okay, here's the way you, we, we're taught to make it. But we can't use this guy, right? So we're going to bring our middle finger over where the first finger was. And we're just going to, again, keep this guy out and make the chord. And then he comes in later when we want to move down. And we just went from F to F sharp. To G, okay, and I, so if we're going to tear this apart, I'm going to leave. I'm going to take the bar out, and I'm going to refinger. Because here's the bar, okay. Here's our G chord that we know. Here's the chord we just made. All right, so a useful shape. You know, these these are all useful. Here's a C chord which we, or a F chord which we use a lot and here's a G chord which we use a lot. And that just makes it kind of a cool transition hitting the, the chord in between which is F sharp. So that is our F form bar chord. And our other uh, position we're going to learn is this A. Okay here's our normal A chord that we are some more familiar with. Two one zero zero. Instead of making it here, we can, we're not going to use our index finger. We're going to make it without our index finger, and then we can just slide her down wherever we want it. So here's A, B flat, B, C. Very useful shape. So those are our three majors. All right, for the the bar chords and. Just learning those three shapes, that's going to take time to where you, you get everything right. First, get used to making the chord without your index finger. That'll take time to do. Okay, I can show you in an hour, but you can't learn it in an hour. I guess that's how I would say it. 
but uh, you know, and then you again, as always, you want to come in perpendicularly, and then all that's left is is finding the right way to align your finger, both in this axis up and down, uh, this way here to here, this dimension, and as far as rolling. Find out where on your finger is just the exact best place to get a good clean sound. All right, and it takes time to learn, so there's no getting around it. So keep at it. You know, don't don't spend two hours at a time just working on bar chords. But when you get out and play, uh, get your uke out and you're playing. I, that's another concept. I never practice because practice is boring. Okay, that's why everybody quits piano lessons because they have to practice. Or uh, sports, what, do you want to play or do you want to practice? I'd rather play. So I always play. All right, I never practice. Now I might be sitting in my bedroom uh, by myself trying to improve, but I'm still playing. So it's kind of a mental game you play with yourself. But uh, for, I find it helpful. So, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. Run with it or, or don't. That's up to you. But, um, but when you play, just go over some of these things a few times. And, you know, the more you do it, the sooner you'll learn it. Makes sense? So that's, that's how that goes. So anyway, here's our, here's our A shape without our index finger. So those are our major shapes. So let's talk about minors. Uh, basically three minor positions that we use a lot. This is our A minor, right? So we're not going to make it with our index. We're going to make it with our... Actually, it's probably best that we make it with our ring finger because our bar is going to be one, two frets up. So here's A minor, B flat minor, B minor. B minor is an important chord if you're playing the key of D or G. You'll see B minor quite frequently. So you can do the full bar, which is how I prefer, or you can just use the pad of your finger here. And if you do it with the, the pad of your index finger, you might want to use your pinky instead because it's it's more of a stretch and you're, you're putting a strain on your hand. So Take the time to get used to using your pinky. It's worthwhile, it's value, it's important. Okay, I'm telling you, that's your homework. Fall in love with your pinky. So there's B minor. This is again the A minor shape. All right, and uh, the other minor shape is this G minor shape. But what can't we do? We can't use this guy, so we have to refinger. And we're only need, we're only using the bar, so there's two ways. You know, again, this is the flexibility here. You can either instead of doing the flat bar, since the bottom three strings are all being fretted already, you can just fret this uh, top string. All right, that's that's still a, a movable shape. So here's G minor, here's an A minor. Okay, so another way to make an A minor. Open form, open form, closed form. So those are your three minor shapes, off the A minor, off the D minor, and off the G minor, which is a little tougher. But work at it, okay, and, and when you start feeling comfortable, remember to throw it in every once in a while, okay, and the more time you spend, just like anything else, the better you'll get. And I also want to show you some bar forms for seventh chords. And as you, if I mentioned earlier, if a seventh chord has four degrees or four notes in it. So I'm going to show you a, a form for having each one of those four notes on the top, just like we did with all these other chords. Okay, so here's a, the C form. This 
with the root on the top, which is a C note and a C chord, the F form, so that would be, F would be A, C, F, A, so that would be the third, this form has the third on the top, and the A form, that has a root on the top. So, uh, anyway, meanwhile back at the ranch, a C seventh, not with the index finger, but since we're going to be just one one fret away, we'll, we'll use our middle finger here. C sharp seventh or D flat seventh, same thing. D seventh. So here's the C seventh shape. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, and on and on we go. All right. So another uh, fairly easy seventh chord is the one finger A seventh chord. So again, this this C shape going backward a little bit has the flatted seventh on top. This A shape that we're going to do has the root on top. So an A note on top, which is the highest note, that's what I mean by on top, of the A chord, or the A seventh. So this is just one first finger, second finger, second fret, first finger, first finger. All right, and that kind of goes along with so here's our A major chord, or I'm sorry, our A seventh chord. Here's our A major chord. And this is just building off the same thing. Here's another, okay, seventh chord. shape would be G seventh, the triangle thing, okay. That's got a third on the top, third degree of the G, which would be a B note, A, B flat, B. We're going to make it without our index finger, so we have to re-finger. We have um, ring finger, middle finger, and pinky. Same thing, we can do it here, or we can do the full bar, either one. You get a choice here. So if this is G7th, A flat 7th, A7th, seventh, nice chord if you're in the key of D. Alright, there's of course your D major chord that we learned about. And the other uh, basic shape I want to show you is the E7th bar form. There's our E7th, one, two, zero, two. Have to not use him yet, so we're going to just move everybody up one. One, two, zero, two. E7th, F7th. And again, we're only fretting, we're actually only needing the bar for one, just the third string down. So we can do it this way too if we don't want to go flat. There's F7th, seventh, G7th, seventh, A7th, seventh, C7th. Seventh. So there are 10 different bar chord shapes for you to integrate at your own pace, at your own leisure, uh, in your time as you see fit uh, to add two things, both uh, color to the songs you're already playing, but also when you can do bar chords, you can play in any key. All right, there's 12, you know, a bar, of course, you can go 12 times up and down the neck and because there's 12 notes in the chromatic scale. And uh, it just, it 
just multiplies and magnifies the ability that you have to uh, play with anybody, any song, anytime, anywhere, any place, anyhow. So, and of course, you know, the bar chords are all the way up. I didn't show way up the neck, but uh, let's, so let's talk about that a little bit. I mentioned that uh, earlier on, well, familiar shapes that we already know, how they can be used up the neck. And because here's a, here's a G chord. If we move it up one, two, three, four, five, it's a C chord. The thing is, when you're using the uh, two and three finger chords, you have to be aware of open strings messing you up. But uh, in the case of going from a G to a C, you're okay. Now, if you go from G to D by going up seven frets, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C, D flat, D. That's the note you don't want in the chord. And that's where your pinky comes in. The other thing I'll tell you, it's not cheating, but uh, if you're working on a G chord, just leave this guy out. Make it a three, excuse me, a three string chord. And the best way I found to do that is to anchor with your right hand somewhere, you know, not, not so much here, but and strum with your thumb. Because again, that gives you the point of reference without having to look down at which strings you are and aren't strumming. And say, just uh, leave the strings that you're not fretting out, especially when you're playing, a, if you're playing in a wacky key. Did you hear the difference? When I strum this uh, top string, I'm making it, in this case, I'd be like a major seventh, which you might use sometimes, but it's just kind of catch as catch can. Probably don't want that note in the chord at the sixth fret. But this is fine. So again, just use your thumb and you can have more of a controlled strum, or even if, if you're using the top three strings. So, uh, just uh, another hint. Say a thousand and one different ways to uh, expand your horizons. And that's a little bit scattered, but I'm just winging it here. I don't really have a script. I'm just uh, talking about things as they pop into my head. And uh, hopefully, again, maybe you'll find a nugget or two in here. So, uh, again, chords up the neck. So if you make the bar, There you go, okay? All with one shape. It's just these three chords all day. And of course you don't want to just strum those three chords uh, with those positions for three minutes while you're singing. But uh, you know, that'll, that'll get you started there. I just want to show you that all, all these chords that you know are the same shapes up the neck, all right? Okay, here's uh, like an F chord that would be a little trickier. So you probably got to do the bar chord there. See, here's where big fingers kind of get me in trouble because when the frets are this close together, I have a hard time. All right, so I probably, if I'm playing up the neck, I'm probably just playing uh, like a melody or partial chords. So, but uh, we're not really here to discuss that. I just want to show you one other thing uh, for your right hand. Uh, not a really a strum pattern, but just another way to augment your playing, which has nothing to do with the five or 19. But it's uh, it gets you into a whole different thing than strumming, which is finger style, which is more the style I tend to use, uh, enjoy more. And then it's just kind of an alternating pick a note with your thumb and strum. Pick, strum, pick, strum, a pick, strum, pick, strum. A. 
it's down stroke with the thumb, down brush, and then just catch the top note on the way up the second time. Down, up, pick, down, up, pick. for any of this of course but uh, anyway so five and 19 five fingers 19 frets and uh, hopefully you will find some things in here that you'll uh, be able to use and incorporate into what you do uh, thanks for if you came to the workshop um, I'm glad I had a chance to do this in person if you didn't see the workshop this is still a good uh, tutorial to, to learn some of those things and if that's the case, I will invite you to uh, a future WASOP, all right? And uh, to keep in touch, you can send me an email, sugarfmsm at gmail.com. That comes right to me, and I can answer any questions about some of the things I covered here today, as well as questions that you may have regarding uh, the WASOP Festival. So, again, my name's Johnny Hunt. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, trust that you learned something valuable. If you did, tell a friend. You know, we all uh, pretty much are in contact with other youth players. Uh, maybe there's some things on here that will interest or help other people along the way. So, uh, Johnny Hunt signing.